space traveler. From the beginning of time, humans have always looked towards the sky for inspiration and guidance. There has been a fascination with birds, stars, gods, goddesses and other entities which seem to exist above us, and for many humans, a strong yearning to travel into space. Man has dreamt of flight since observing space and now it is time to become the space traveller. The future of space travel requires us to understand from where we came to see where we are going. Several thousand years ago, philosophers Mozi and Lu Ban from China were looking to the wind for flight. They invented kites using silk and bamboo, allowing for the later development of communication, measuring distances, testing the wind, and lifting men. The invention of the kite brought with it the desire to fly. The first known attempts at flight were typically by leaping off towers, known as tower jumping. People in China, India and Europe first attempted flight this way. In 1670, Francesco Lana de Tarzi published a book that showed some interesting concepts. The concept of copper foil in a sphere with a vacuum would produce a vacuum airship. This is still not possible with today's materials. Francesco is recognized as the father of aeronautics, melding science and mathematics into aerial navigation. The Chinese are believed to have developed the first hot air device. The Chinese lantern using hot air from a candle can take flight and was first used for signalling. The hot air balloon achieved the first human lift and advanced to what we know of as the Zeppelin. The first attempts at flight in a heavier than air flying machine were made by more than just the Wright brothers. Most attempts failed, however they were the stepping stones for what was to come later. The oldest airport, College Park is still in operation today. Airplanes evolved rapidly through the century, from propeller to helicopter to jet aircraft, and most of that technology is used today. During the Second World War, Germany developed rockets that could go a limited distance. The basic rocket technology used then is still used today. The space race started with the Soviet Union and the USA in 1957 and led to many developments for the next step, the moon. The spacecraft assigned as Apollo 11 was the first spacecraft to have landed on the moon. The space shuttle operated at tremendous cost, burning the fuel proved to be wasteful and dangerous technology. The International Space Station, ISS, is a habitable artificial satellite that was assembled in low Earth orbit in 1998 with the use of the Space Shuttle, the ISS can often be seen with the naked eye from Earth. SpaceX, as a private aerospace producer and space transportation services company, was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk with the goal of reducing space transportation costs and enabling the colonization of Mars. SpaceX reuses the first stage of their primary rocket, Falcon 9, by vertical propulsive landings. Although, up to present time, it still uses the rocket fuel burning technology. Mehran Kesh has always said, the time for burning fuels is over, but did we need to start with that technology in the first place? Ancient cultures have suggested the use of an alternative means of transportation. With reference to possible plasma technology, you can go to New York from Brussels within two to five minutes. And most of this five minutes is actually uh, landing and getting up. Mehran Tavakoli Kesh was born in Iran in 1958. As the son of an X-ray engineer, he was introduced to the world of radiation and nuclear science at a very young age. In 1981, he graduated from Queen Mary, the University of London, as a nuclear engineer specialized in reactor technology system control. 
At that time, he developed a number of theoretical ideas related to more simple nuclear concepts and their applications. In 2002, he decided to finish the full design of his ideas about nuclear technology. This included the creation and control of gravity and energy by the use of nuclear materials in a clean and safe hydrogen reactor. Mehran Kesh introduced the concept of double magnetic fields to explain the magnetic and gravitational field of Earth. Unknown by the existing scientific community, he wrote a number of scientific papers in 2004 and sent them for peer review, such as the creation of black holes. When one of the persons performing the peer review used his information in public, he decided to draw back his papers and to concentrate further on building prototypes. Since the beginning of 2006, several prototypes of dynamic reactors have been built, some specifically designed to create hovering effects, similar to effects seen with magnetic levitation. Basic hovering effects have been achieved. 2007 brought the first flight test with radioactive material in which the patents describe the process of the field interactions. The main patent, gravitational and energy system, described the initial fundamental aspects of the plasma and uses. This was followed by the supplemental patent, Microplasma Reactors, where further uses and advancements were described. Mr. Kesh found himself in Iran in 2008 and was provided all the resources needed to create the first lift of a plasma reactor managed by the Iranian government. These special rotating gas reactors were used to control the plasma to bring a deeper understanding, Mr. Kesh released the first book in 2009, The Universal Order of Creation of Matters, which contained many new concepts released to the public. This included the PMTIC plasma magnetic fields, initial fundamental plasma and plasma dilution technology used for space reactors. The plasma technology was further developed and it manifested in weight fluctuation in a controlled environment. 2010 introduced a new state of matter called GANS, an acronym for gas in nanosolid state. The GANS produces fields to be used in the operation of the spaceship. Advanced flight tests were performed in Iran with the guidance of Mr. Kesh and the newly designed systems. Mr. Kesh tells us you can't bring all the doctors with you in space. Medical research advanced in 2010 and is still being explored daily all around the world. The Cash Foundation has provided knowledge for dealing with many medical conditions in space. A great example of plasma technology used for peaceful process is the capturing of the USA drone over Iran in December 2011. This drone was touted as one of the most advanced drones of its day and was caught by Iran using plasma to disrupt the communications. Plasma absorbs fields and the drone uses radio fields for piloting, a natural aspect of the plasma, a barrier of fields. Book two, The Structure of the Light, was released in 2011. This book brought forward the understanding of the structure of light as a cylindrical plasma where the light is in possession of all magnetic field strengths. Book three, The Origin of the Universe, was published later in 2011. Mr. Kesh explained the further operation and interaction of different strengths of the same fields, which then leads to the creation of the universe. These three books bring forward a much deeper understanding of the plasma science that is applied worldwide by knowledge seekers and scientists in spaceship research and development. There were two conferences to release the space technology to governments in 2012. The first international presentation in April, Kesh Foundation invited representatives of every country to the first presentation of the plasma technology. The second international presentation in September, Kesh Foundation invited the nations of the world through their ambassadors and their leaders to attend a gathering at the Kesh Foundation Center in Nenov, Belgium. Space travel requires peace. The implementation of the plasma technology brings greater responsibility. In 2013, Mr. Kesh brought forward the World Peace Treaty. Signing of the peace treaty is a confirmation from yourself to your soul 
to act correctly in a peaceful manner. In 2014, knowledge seekers came together from around the world to learn from Mr. Kesh and many different experiments with reactors were performed, including improving the previously developed reactors to fit with the new knowledge, introduction of nano-coated reactors, multi-core GANS systems. The Spaceship Institute lab experiments were streamed live on the internet for all to see. SSI lab tests with reactors showed strong magnetic field pulses up to 129 Tesla and showed significant weight fluctuations. In December, an experiment was performed using reactors built by knowledge seekers from around the world. Italy, Germany and Canada were involved in field communication tests. The tests showed that fields can interact with each other no matter the distance or time, resulting in instant communication. In 2015, developments for space continued with different aspects of the plasma technology, such as in health, energy, and decontamination. In October of 2015, Mr. Kesh taught a popular week-long course called the Blueprint Teachings about how to build the Magrav power units. People from all over the world participated with building their own Magrav units and teaching others. With the demand of the Cash Foundation products from all over the world, a new research center and manufacturing opened in Arizona, USA. Many developments of the technology happened in different parts of the world, and Cash Foundation USA is no exception. John and the team started performing experiments using different sensing tools. These tools allowed the team to visualize the MoGrav fields and to show others their interactions. With reactor formations showing positive results, partaking in the knowledge together is easier and more joyful than ever. The fun has just begun, says M.T. Kesh. Mr. Kesh publicly teaches the space technology through the weekly Knowledge Seekers workshops. Plasma enthusiasts from around the world participate in gathering the knowledge and putting the puzzle together in the space race. All people, irrespective of race, nation or religion, are invited to participate in the exchange of knowledge, thus assisting humanity to live within the ethos of the universe. It is recognized that international cooperation and peace is a prerequisite for mankind to journey into deep space. Individuals and nations are invited to come together in the spirit of collaboration and unity to enable peaceful application and the use of plasma technology for space travel, food, agriculture, energy, transportation, health, and more. We are excited to release the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Blueprint to humanity. Hello and welcome everyone to the 222nd Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, May 3rd, 2018. I'm your host, Rick Crammond, and I can barely believe I'm saying 222 Knowledge Seekers Workshops over the last uh, few years. Every single Thursday, we've heard the broadcast from Mr. Kesh of the Kesh Foundation who is here once again to enlighten us. And I understand today will be a shorter two-hour, limited to a two-hour session. So we'll try to uh, keep it to that. And uh, today's topic will be primarily the spaceship technology. So if we can restrict uh, questions more in that range, that would be best. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Mr. Kesh, are you ready there? Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and um, wherever you listen to these teachings. As usual, we start with uh, some information that we can learn and we start with some teachings that we can carry on. As Rick said, due to other commitment, this teaching will stop uh, at about two hours, as we have a important commitment that we have to undertake. In any way, in two hours we can teach us a man will learn in a thousand years, depending on the susceptibility of the man and openness of his knowledge. 
in so many ways, there has to be taught that the knowledge of space is unlimited and anyone who claims that he knows all shows the dimension of the light that they need to learn more. We carry the knowledge as totality because we are born with it. It's part of us. And the sooner we learn this, the faster we can travel the depth of the space. Something which has come up very interesting, in some communications, public communications, we see that they say there is a need, a police force need for a space. It shows those who are in this level of talk, have not understood. In the space, there is no police, and mankind would not be allowed to introduce police force. As those who understood, only those who understand the travel through the space of time and their soul, will achieve deep space travel. Man has to police himself through the conduct of his soul, not by the side arm. This shows the short sightness not understanding the truth about the flight. In the long term, man would not carry any weapons. And in the short term, man would not be allowed to carry any weapons. So those who speak about police force in space, it means they have not been there, they have not any clue about the process of the space travel. Mr. Travel with the, yes? Can you uh, try to adjust your mic, please? We're just having... Yes. We travel the deep depth of the space through conduct of our souls and very very easily man will find out we don't see any wars the star wars is in the brain of the man not the reality of the space on the other hand we have to understand more about our own creation to be able to travel in depth of the space as we said the race is on with all the keshe foundations around the world to see who can what they can do and come forward to show we have a video of someone who wants to show us about their vibration of their system. And if you like to show that, Rick, that we can base, as we are teaching about the totality of the space travel, that how it looks and what it should be, please. Let's get that set up here. Okay, uh, I think that should work. Um, this is from Thomas, and it shows his uh, reactor, I guess you call it a starship reactor combination. This is the three bottom reactors. I'll play it through, it's a, a minute long here. Online, can I explain to us what this is? Can you stop? Hello, Rick. Um, can he explain to us what this is? What does he say? He uh, Thomas, do you want to uh, go ahead and explain your system there? Hello, thank you. Hello, Mr. Cash. Hello. Where are this you is, from? This is um, Thomas from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Yeah. And I've been working with reactors for the last year and I've come up with a design. Um, this is a two core design and all the cores are spinning in opposing um, directions from its inner to its outer. It's a 40 millimeter diameter inside a, with a 20 millimeter diameter. And um, in the setup, 
uh, the CH3 is on the outside and there's some heavier GANs on the, uh, the inside. One of them's bismuth, another is um, CO2, and another one is, um, well, it, it's made with gold, but you say that you can't make gold GANs out of gold, so I don't know exactly what you would call it, but... Um, some people can, some people can. <clears throat> Depends how you make. It's easier to make the plasma of the gold and then convert it to gold. I'm trying to make a gas of gold from gold. If you make, if you got a gold and you can measure its resistance, when you on you, this is what by experience we can say. If you got a silver or gold, to nano coat it means a specific way to do it and you know that you have made a gans of gold, is that when you um, put your, um, uh, let's say, the two uh, polarities of a voltmeter or a ohmmeter on the gold, you get zero reading. This is the best engagement. So, if you made silver gold, uh, uh, nano-coated or uh, any of the two or any of the heavy elements. The only way which we can say up to now is exactly like what happens when you nanocoat a copper. If you put your two electrodes on the silver or a gold, you see zero reading, which means there's no conductivity. Then, if you go into the phase of producing the GANs of it, which means you have to have again one nanocoated gold and non one nanocoated gold, then you start making guns of gold. This is not easy sometimes, it just depends on how you push it. I don't know if uh, any of our people can go on the archives of the Keshe Foundation. I show it can be done. Um, we have a brooch, uh, can I share the screen please? You see it is a, it's a gold silver brooch which belonged to Caroline, and what we did with it, it's, it's in the diamond sheet, where we say how you make diamonds of everything. It's a brooch like this, and it has some figures, three of them. And um, when you put diamond detectors on it, it shows it's diamond. When you put diamond detector there, it's diamond. We use, I, I used to carry diamond detectors, so, if you put it on a normal gold, it just goes, it's not. If you put it on a normal silver, it doesn't. But when you create a GANs of, what you call it, nano-coated gold, when you put a diamond tester on it, it shows it's diamond. So there is a second process to test it. And then, if you, what you do, very similar the way you make a GANs of copper or GANs of zinc, you need a nano-coated gold and a plate of gold. And what you get here is pure gold GANs, because gold hardly oxidizes. So, gold is the nearest you get to. Silver does oxidize. And then, when you get a GANs through the same process, you can make the GANs water of gold. This is the easiest way to do, but 100% sure what you make it is. If you, I don't know where it is, we have this, it's, in, it's on the network of the Keshe Foundation, if the webmasters can find it. It's a page we have shown. We even nano-coated zirconium. And uh, those days I used to work in the diamond bars. I took it to diamond bars and I showed it to the, to the merchants there. They brought all the machines. We, I remember three different electronic machines came and they said this. I told them one thing you cannot do, you cannot weigh it. They said, this, why not? I said, the only thing you cannot do, you cannot weigh this stuff. I brought you a new diamond, it's a five character, we actually found it a few days ago. Do you have it? You still have it? You can show it? Can, if you take a picture of it and send it to Rick, Rick, Caroline will send you the picture of this mm. ring. It's a five character zirconium, okay. I managed to nano coat it in a specific way, that the top layers of the zirconium became, presenting itself as a diamond. It's a crystal structure. 
and we took it to the Diamond Boards in Antwerp and I asked them to test it. That's the one, yes, this should be, you should see the other part of it. The, this is a standard Diamond Tester for the Diamond Boards and um, it shows everything changed in time and there should be another picture of it. Should be a number of pictures, it's one page, it's like a brochure, leaflet. <coughs> and so, you can produce diamond uh, structure, which if it literally shows it's a diamond, uh, you have a diamond structure, we can do it with silver, gold, zirconium. And what happened there, I gave a promise to the diamond course, I will not release this for the time being. Now that many of you have developed that process, you can literally make a zirconium to test to be a diamond, so when they test it, there it is. Caroline, they found it, it's okay. Um, the, even the gold ring shows it's a diamond. We've done the same with the zirconium, which is in the ring. So, when you do this, then you have to put the parallel, the way we understood, and uh, then you can proceed with it. And you make the gangs of it. But what is a strange or what it should be said? Um, we don't need heavy elements. Having the heavy elements to make guns up is not um, is not really recommended because the more powerful gravitational systems go more towards the higher power of the plasma in the direction of uh, plasma strength. When you go for people, they want to make gold of it and the rest of it, um, this means you're still stuck in the matter state. You think the more heavier you go, the more power you have. The, the true uh, space technology, you go towards down, towards the uh, uh, neutron, you go making that direction, hydrogen, tritium, and that you do not get affected by the change of the fields in the, in the universe. This is important, and this is part of the structure we try to show. Do not forget, I understand a lot of misunderstanding or a lot of miscomprehension in technology by a lot of people, but in a way has brought a lot of good things, new insights, but we had to teach everything. We had to teach, this is a silver, you can see it's silver shows 100% gold characteristics. What do you call it? Uh, uh, diamond characteristics. So, Mr. Kesh, yes. would this coating be, like in the case of the, the gold, would it be an actual nano gold coating, or yes. would it be a, a carbon coating? It's or a nano gold coating. But with the carbon type, uh, tetra or no, three, no, no, 3D no. structure. Uh, it's the crystal structure. Structure it's... and a matter are two different things. Diamond structure and a diamond as a matter state are two different things. Diamond structure means the structure behaves as a diamond, which means become non perishable But all the diamonds, if you exert certain amount of pressure on them, or in a given position, they become superconductors. There is a patent, in a European patent by a scientist, I don't know if he's still alive, a Belgian scientist who used to work with the beer, and uh, he, he proven that if you put diamond on the pressure, at a certain point, it becomes a superconductor and it switches back. That's that's right. I was just reading about that a couple of days ago, actually, about uh, yes. um, how the hydrogen can turn into a superconductor under extreme pressure. They put it between two diamond anvils and crank up the pressure to the most extreme that's on they've ever done before, and it can turn the hydrogen into a, a solid, which makes it superconducting and magnetic. Yeah, what happened is that the beer, yes, we see that ring, we showed it before. Um, the, this, this scientist who came out with this um, technology, that 
um, diamond can change into a superconductor uh, for a short time. Uh, has found this, uh, they found the application for it in the high super uh, monorail trains, what they call it, mono, what's the name of them? The magnetic levitation system in Japan. Um, Meglev, I think, maybe. Maglev, yes. So, he came out, but it's too expensive to use diamonds, so the Belgium people who we used to work with, they asked us to, because now we could find a cheaper diamond structure with us, if we can test this, that we can replace diamond. I work with this scientist, he's done a lot of work with me, um, I don't I don't think he's alive, if he's right now, very old man. And we've proven, yes you can do, you can use this, uh, the, the nanotechnology, the way we did, to be able to use it, but has a different way of approach, uh, that you can actually measure it on the ring, it's a very specific way to do it. Um, and you can create a magrav system on a, on a, on a nano uh, structure. So it can work, uh, we worked on it for, for a long time. And one thing we did, we, here you can see that, that's the gold with the silver, the Egyptian label. Uh, that's the one I was explaining. Um, the center is silver and gold embedded, and the all is totally nano-coated, it's a picture of it. So, you can, uh, what you do is that, um, uh, these, you can convert them into any guns you like. You can use them for anything, and the background, the long piece is a, a copper from the battery, mobile battery, you see the zirconium ring, you see all the other rings, the twisted wires in the front is a strange thing, because you can connect one end of it to a battery and the other end of it to, uh, let's say, a light, and it'll light up. And people cannot, that a wire can be a resistance, you know, a naked wire. They touch it, they play with it, and this is very, very important. Mr. Cash, um, yes. It's, you've described it before as uh, it's all in the knife that you use to coat whatever uh, materials you're, you're trying to. Could you uh, talk on that a little bit, uh, just to remind everybody on, on uh, it's not just the, the uh, hydrogen or the, uh, the way that we normally nanocoat copper, that's just- There are I different use. ways to do it. I use different techniques. Don't forget, uh, it's 20 years of experience. Uh, so, I use different techniques, sometimes very high pressures, sometimes not pressures, but high temperatures in a specific way. And um, you can literally nanocoat anything. I, I became good at it. I can nanocoat even uh, nanocoat itself, which is a lot of people don't understand. Uh, you can create nano layers that they become the nano layer of their own nano layer. Um, these are needed for superconductor transmission and space travel. The, we haven't taught a lot about the process, and there's a lot to do. There's a lot more can be done. Uh, but so this is an example of it. You don't need uh, nano gold. When you go into the nano gold in your reactors and the space flight, it's good to see. The vibration, we see this is not a flight vibration, this is your motor vibration. I saw in Shenzhen a few weeks ago, uh, that the guy put a cup, I think I explained it, can I have the... Well, if I can share, I'll show you what it... If I explained it before, because it was very interesting, he was trying to people that it can make water rotate, there's a cup of water here, and the water in it rotates. But what it does, he makes a frame, and he puts the cup, and in this frame he puts uh, one of our cores, the ones which we used, uh, like a uh, copper one, and he puts cans in it, and then he runs it. When he runs it, the motor rotates. The, what do you call it, the water rotates. And I tell him this is a cheat. He looked at me and the people were very amazed, he can change, he was telling them, 
that the field from here rotates this. I said, I'll show you the trick, what you're doing, but you're not telling people what you're doing. I said, put a cup here, next door, and see if you check. If it's real, so your cup of water should be able. I took the cup and I put it on this side. So it's the same distance. You say, this water rotates, this should rotate too. Nothing happens here. Because the vibration of the motor creates a vibration in the water. What you see in the shaking, is not the lift shaking, this is the vibration of your three motors. When you see a true flight condition, um, you, you don't see vibration this way. The vibration is usually like a clacking. It was, it's a specific mode, you know, when you put a, put a, um, let's say a ruler in your hand and hit it on both ends. It's that kind of thing. It's one tries to lift, the other one pulls it down. When you vibrate the way you do in these kind of directions, or if you are in a field direction, your system should start rotating. Because it's trying to build into the system. The system rotates in its own plate, say, and then the system rotates up or down too. So, what we see there is the vibration of the motors. When you have 10, 20 kilogram weights, 10 kilo above 5, 10, then uh, you see very clearly when you achieve left hand motion. The, the, the Iranian reactor we showed before, when it's uh, itself, when it, let me clear it out, itself, when it wants to fly, it, it clicks like this. You hear it, it's two end of the pot, touching. And then when I put another reactor to it, because of its strength being higher by mass here, and the way we apply the nuclear materials inside it, this one always flies. And how we position load, we can dictate where it's going to go. Because if it was accidental, you don't do it. I, I caught this ball, you've seen it. If you go back, you see, um, just go back on the video of the two reactors in the introduction video, where it speaks about the, um, uh, the two white reactors of the Iranian ones, we put them on the table, and we load them in a specific way. This one always flies, because this is the Earth, this is the pure spaceship. And uh, it was very easy. In Tehran Sharif University, I could exactly dictate where it goes. I injured myself many times, because this reactor has a lot of pins. And when it flies, you've got a small firing. And so, you can do, you move, you keep this, you bring it to closer, and you speed it up, or you change the combination inside, and you can dictate which way it goes, because it has two things to react. One is this, and one is Earth gravitation. I remember one of the Iranian top scientists, when he walked in and he saw it the first time, he says, Mehran, you came to Iran to build this, and you got it. You told us from the first day, you're going to build the system, the full sphere, to see it, and you've done it. Because you dictate the position of flight. For us to bring down a satellite, is very easy, extremely easy now. To bring a high-speed aircraft is very easy, because you replace this, with the field motion of your system. It comes into the line with it. This is more advanced system. This Thank is, you. You apply, thank you very much. You apply a direct field, and you can directionalize it. Because I, I perfected the art of flying uh, an object, in respect to another. Because if you fly against the Earth gravitational magnetic field, then you have to find a way. But now, 
do not know the parameters. But with this way, what we do, we know the parameters. It's flying against what you have created. Point of reference. It needs a lot of understanding, it just doesn't happen. You have to understand every position, every direction, because here, you have in reality, the same gravitational magnetic field of the Earth. And then if you position it slightly further, or in different type, in Tehran Sharif University, we got a table right here in the center, and we could see it. You could just move one object to one way and say which way it's going to go, because we knew the field forces from the point. This is what you do, you decide from which planet you are flying, and which way you go in respect to it. But how much can you change? In the space travel, in the space technology to come, you create a direction within your system, that you always travel in respect to. This is how you make a control system. You don't control yourself about another planet. It's a, it's a, it's a knowledge to be gained, and as I said, um, very soon we bring all this knowledge together to the Chinese government to space program. We invite the Americans to join us, the same as the Iranians are the best. The way we opened, uh, what we call the Sansano, we had everyone, Americans, everybody else, on the table of teaching, uh, learning, um, it's the same again. But this time we work with protection, we don't let the Belgians come and kill. They can stay in the cage of the nation. But uh, you will see the new space reactors which are getting developed uh, in the war test are very much very different, but very correction of the total knowledge what we thought. Thank you, Mr. Kesh. I just have one quick question about um, my reactors. They're a little different than what um, I guess that has been shown. And there's a, um, I have the two and a three core design, and in between the two cores where the GANs um, is being held, I actually have an air gap in between there. And I wanted to ask you about that and how that would change the system. I'm under the impression that anything in between those cores is in the GAN state. So I would have the GANs, an air gap, and then another layer of GANs, and then the center would be hollow. This is a four-core reactor, this is what we are talking about. This is hollow, you have a GANS here, this is hollow, you have a GANS here. Correct. Uh, the setup which we asked or introduced before in the teachings. So, but you have to understand in what level you are pushing it and how you are pushing it. The, 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 there is a lot which has not been understood, uh, and we've brought it, I explained it, and I, I sit back, I don't touch, till somebody comes up with a, an answer for it. The, we expect a full flight system with a new non reactor based, uh, in a very short time. Because you have to go through all the knowledge, not just picking one corner. When you make a flight system, it has to be the totality of the knowledge we ever understood. Not just we do one part of it. Positioning, field forces, transmission, um, the field structure, GANS structure. Because one thing you will find out, the second you start creating the right fields, your GANSes disappear. Because your ganses are in the inertial matter state, so when this takes over, in so many ways, you, uh, you literally, um, they just, the fields go back, and everything, even the plastic separations you have created, become nothing, it's not existence, it's the field full of the plasma which hold, will hold itself.
Those things come back into existence when the reactor is shut down, or are they permanently erased, you might say? Depends, depends. Some, most of the times they do. Most of because you're on the Earth gravitational condition. You haven't distorted, you have gone to the higher level of them. This is what happens, you don't destroy anything. You, you operate it here in the matter state, now you go here. And then when you bring the matter condition of the Earth, it goes back to the self particle system. In most of the cases. It's the way you manifest your body according to the environment. I, I did, sorry, I did um, find that motion you're talking about, that the system wants to, to spin one way, and um, the minute it was you see, Let me explain to you, I'm going to stop you for a specific. This is one of the biggest problems you people face. The minute you see your system is trying to go to opposite, you set it, let it go. It means you have loaded that sequence, even though you thought you loaded another sequence. And then remember, when you, any of you, do any test, any of this, I keep on saying even to our team all the time, find yourself a habit of scientist. Write everything down. Ganses, which way you loaded first, position of them, amount of them, how you produced it, and everything else. Then you can more or less go always back to your point of reference. Try the modern technology gives you a different action. Try to take pictures. You, you, it's not the olden days that you have to one develop the pictures on your camera. Just change it. Refer to it, I saw this before, what does it mean, how does it do? Try to record everything with the space system. Because sometimes when you're not in the room, it might fly and it goes round again, because the field forces create rotation. If you look at the test we did in the Sasano, we bought these elastic jump, what do you call it? Um, they jump off the cliffs. And we put the system of Armand hanging on it. And then it gradually, it couldn't extend anymore, but gradually the field forces brings it down. And then it pulls it back. And you can watch it, and then it rotates itself. We had a dust on the floor, that we could see the rotation. Try to detach your system from the ground. I saw your system there. When you have legs, make sure your legs have a coating. Because now you are independent of the matter state, you sit on a bed of magnetic field. If you look, if you can go through the references, no spaceship ever touches a ground. Very, very seldom, unless they know what they are doing. As long as you are separated, you can detach. I saw a massive weight on the floor. One of the reasons you're getting this vibration is because you got a massive plate on the table. When you reduce you to legs, you don't see that much. If you look with Arizona tests, they, they don't do. Try to make a bigger space gap between your plates, bottom level, and the table or the ground. Because you need to allow the field forces, if this is your, the star formation, if this is your star formation, with your motors, you need enough gap with your legs, that you allow the field forces to come in. And, if you look at it, it's this way, that they carry enough, that they can build enough. When you test the motor, when you test the system, do not stand there waiting to fly. If you become good at it, you can do it. 
when I test, I can say 10 seconds, 20 seconds is the maximum to wait, especially with nuclear material. So, you need it for the fields to come and then to build up. The same happens here. The same happens here. And as this goes up, what it comes up to, is comes up, it hits another system. Now it showers back and it comes back to itself. And then, this needs to be increased. So you have to find a way that you can increase this field, that it just builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up. But don't forget, there's another field building up here, and there's another field building up here. You get the three-dimensional structure and you get your, uh, your lift. Go back to the original teachings, if you remember some time ago, we said when you make this uh, star formation, that real plasma field is here, not inside your reactors. It sits, it's created by the total mass rotation itself. It hasn't got the boundary. If you go back to the teaching, this is the original spaceship, single reactors. It's been extended to this, mainly for the control. When you go into space, you will see this, there is a lot of them, it's like a museum piece. They, they used to affect the fields, by other fields, trying to create lift and motion. But over time, the star formation proven to be mainly what is reliable to fly. And because with this, you can use mono elements, and mono elements are very safe. You, the, the less material you use, the less possibility of you losing physicality. Because when you have two items, two matters, zinc, copper, gold, whatever, now, any time, any of the fields can hit one of the four. So, possibility of the loss increases. Uh, Mr. Keshe, would there be radioactivity in these reactors the way you envision them, or is that not part of the process? It's not part of the process. You're dealing with fields. Cosmic radiation is part of this process. Sorry, we got a lot of uh, microphone noise there. It's okay now, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I go in the path of, uh, what do you call it, fans, it's too hot. You, you feel like I'm taking a jump off there, what do you call it, on the parachute? You hear me now? And now it's loud, and yeah. now it's okay. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just free parachuting, I'm taking about a couple of hours. <laughs> no, no. Well, you better so, grab your spaceship then, in that case. <coughs> my spaceship is in my brain. <coughs> the the uh, total... A note to the transcribers, that was an excellent quote, we'll take that and put it into a, mem a meme, uh, I think, for next week. Thank you, Mr. Cash. <coughs> what you got to remember, the, the, uh, we have to open up our understanding. Uh, and understand the totality of the structure of the plasma. If you understand the structure of the plasma, we don't need to create the plasma to use this field of it. So, we are limited by our knowledge. I tried, the week before, I tried to explain. You can literally fly with one plasma, the whole universe works on one plasma. If you, if you look at the whole, let's say, this universe, it's in fact, it's just one plasma. How the fields of this plasma have interacted, interacting, here it makes a galaxy because it has gravitational field forces from here, which is going in, and you have the magnetical of this one, which is coming up, and then you have, the same time, gravitational magnetic field of this one going that way, while the gravitational magnetic field of, uh, let's say, this one is coming this way. So, these interactions create something. <clears throat> these interactions create something, and then because of the space-time lap, these two interact and they create something else. The whole universe is made of one plasma, even though the universe is one plasma. 
the way we see a star is made in the dimension of the galaxy, is the same way the galaxy is made in the dimension of the universe. From the interaction of the fields of it. When you look at the picture on a book number three, on the back of it, it's the structure of a plasma. Or you can call it the structure of the universe. It's us who has to understand. It's us who has to take it a step further. It's, in reality, you can fly with plasma. Single plasma can take you throughout the universe. But it depends what the strength of it you want to use. Well, Mr. Kastekis, in the Krasner's question here is, can we work with the main ganses of CO2, zinc oxide, CH3, and copper oxide? Or do we have to mainly Those aim... Do we have to aim for deuterium, tritium, and hydrogen to be able to achieve the interaction of the fields to achieve lift and motion? Not really. That's the limitation of understanding. You can fly with one electron. That's the plasmatic fields of one electron. This is what we need to understand. If you have a problem with creating um, one gas or the other, just understand you means you have not understood the totality. Start with that, we start with that position. <coughs> the race is on, but who shall win the race is a different thing. Uh, Mr. Kesh, J asks, do the fields discharge if the star formation touches grass or soil? Um, you discharge, but you can build up your system. One of the biggest problem you all have, and goes back to a lot of you in not understanding it, is that uh, most of you, you build these uh, space reactors and you're rotating them. It's just you made a bunch of uh, cooling fans because you haven't understood the total operation. If you go back and look at the process, if you go back and understand what you're doing, you're just rotating a uh, course and you expect something. If you have by accident, the right GANs or right fields, you might see something, and then because you can't believe your knowledge has got, says, Oh, it was something wrong. Something went, Oh, this was not the accurate. Because none of you have gained enough trust in your own knowledge. 90% of you lot cannot fly, cannot see the space travel, is because you don't have the confidence within you, trust in you that I can do it. Even when you do it, you will look at it, because okay, this is not what I was thinking. This is the biggest problem, and I see over and over and over again. You have to understand what it means, what you've done. Accidentally something happened. If you created it, it cannot be accident. It means you haven't understood how you created the accident. It's just like you're driving down the road and you hit the trap, you see him flying all the way in the air and it lands on the cat. You say, I wonder how did he fly and go on the cat? But you don't notice that it was you who hit the guy. Till the policeman comes and knocks on the door, you don't hit and run. But this time the policeman is not there, it's you who haven't understood. The knowledge is very complete. It's just that a lack of trust in one's understanding, lack of confidence 
is 99% of your failures. And I'm not the guy there to say, yes, get it moving. When I'm with myself, I get it moving, because that's my responsibility. But everybody has their own uh, taste and flavor and way to do it. I'm a very, uh, what do you call it, um, strict way that knowledge has to be learned by the man. If we spoon feed it, it goes. All of you, all of you have a huge problem. You make these reactors, and then what happened? Do you know why 99.9% of you cannot fly? You have something very strange, and you don't see them, I explained it many times. You have these little things, called motors. Yeah? That rotates your system. What do you do? The guy says, does it matter if I hit the grass or the ground? What do you do with you? You connect them yourself to the ground. You're always grounded, how do you want to fly? Whatever plasma you're making, you're feeding into the system, you become a very good supplier to your electricity board. And what do they do? They come into the transformer, see so much energy is coming in, somebody's putting it, they don't know what to do, we charge other people, you, you, you make one megawatt, and they sell it free for a good money. But you're still waiting for this to fly, but you're not seeing, you're already touching the ground. When I said, you know, maybe for the first time, some of you will understand. This is your system, isn't it? And you're all connected to the ground. You're feeding them, you, you never fly. It's amazing, none of you will ever fly. Because, how do you want to be a jumbo jet, with full passengers, and chaining yourself with a huge chains to the ground? What you're doing with these wires is no different. You have shackled yourself, and whatever you make, you put the engine on a full throttle. All the four engines of Jumbo Jet running back crazy, but they are going nowhere. Because you put all the wheels, shackle them to the ground, where do you want to go? There, and here is no different. All of you are, if you understand what you're doing and process it step by step, my God, how many of you are very happy? My reactor, I don't see there is something wrong with Mr. Keshe, it lies. You never understood, you lied to yourself. It means, the one who does this, has no understanding of, I know what you, many of you doing it. You don't look, look at, Arizona, where I dictate the technology development. You don't see lines to the wall. And if it's there, they cut it off. How do you want to drive a car, when you have tied the back axle and everything to the ground in the house? You're fooling yourself. How can you want to fly, when you have connected yourself to the position? And if it flies, it means, my God, if you would have caught this, you would have gone. Keep on running your fans, Earth needs to be cooling. They are selling the big ones on the mountains and charge what is it, 10 million for it? You're doing the same thing in the room, you pay a thousand euro for it, and it's the same thing, you're going nowhere, you, you, you glued yourself to the earth. It's not a Tesla car, it needs to be charged to the wall. 
it means you have not understood the process of the generation of power through the Magrav system. And Mr. Keshe, you're not talking about just putting a, a battery system on so that you're no longer plugged into the wall. It's the whole effect yeah, of being the, the, the using... whole thing is you have to have a battery that it charges, otherwise you run out of battery. They have this in Arizona, they haven't sorted it out yet. And we hear Douglas, who was with the Keshe Foundation, and he failed to show energy supply in Washington, and we were told he will show it in two years. Now his claiming is done. Now the process has been matured, allowing him to come out with it. Uh, so, if he has, and he can put it in this, he can fly most of you. That was the whole purpose of independent generation of power you get. We were told in Washington it will not be shown because it's another scam. And we see it now, everywhere is coming up. I've developed it, they've given me a free car. It's a gift of the Foundation, you have to come and share it, then most of you go a step further to achieve a flight. But the generators we provide, is the PPUs from Accra, is built for this kind of processes. <coughs> we get a scam a lot, what we see a lot too. But they, that's the humanity, we give it free, it's for them to give it free when they receive it. Not to go and destroy the people who teach you, and then there is something wrong. A free car doesn't go, it's just the graveyard. <sighs> you have to understand, as I said, I'll give you a month, I'll give you two months. But now all the knowledge seekers who gathered information, knowledge together, I told you, get together and build it up. This is it. If somebody has managed to go to the next phase, what I tell you, you can produce the PPUs, the power generators, we don't give it to the government for power supply, but if you understood it, you can use it in the fly system. No, now that shackle to the wall is gone, there is no chain to hold you. But, still you have to understand what you're doing. As I said, you fly when half of your body is in, half is out. I have tested many, Hundreds and thousands, I still carry my fingers, my toes and my lips. I know what I'm doing. It's a big cutting machine, be careful you don't cut your finger. The process has to be understood, and somehow, uh, as I said, I guide you. Now you know where you are. Go back into your Magrav systems. Set your Magrav system, the way it was originally taught in the first teachings in Baletta. I showed you how to make a generator there, and you all missed it. And I thought, okay, they're happy with the reduction. Those Magrav units, those PPUs are built for the fly system, not for your homes. You are happy with the meager crumbs, you can have it, you're quite welcome. The whole structure has to come together, but you have to understand the full totality. Caroline says, don't be harsh on them, be easy on them. There's no harshness, they have to understand, they, they got to bring it together. Everything is on the table, nobody can make a pizza. Somebody has forgotten there's a little bit of need for a water, for a door to come together. Now you understand why none of you can fly. Because you need a source to be able. In the presentation from Arizona, I I was sitting there and I watched and said, My God, these guys don't even understand what they are. They are happy to feel the heat. We showed it in the days of demonstration. The heat is the flow of fields, it's energy. You have to harvest it. Why do you need a motor? Why do you need a battery? It means you haven't understood yet. Heat doesn't come from nowhere, it comes from a fraction of fields. What the generator does, if you remember I explained, 
you put a magnet, you put the coils, when this magnet rotates, you create electricity, you put your hands on, now you get the heat, what is rotating? Fields of your plasma. Do you want me to come and chew it for you? You have a most powerful plasma system and can you please show the video from uh, Arizona when they try playing with their hands and they say they feel the heat? Where does the heat come from? It's a plasmatic field and the body of the man is against in the plasma condition, you feel it. So you have a field generator, the most powerful field generator. You remember I told you we have a power generator to release? You saw it, you never understood it. Earth creates its current, but there is no motor, no generator. It's from the interaction of the fields of the conditions and the materials, and it creates its own current flow. You still got two weeks to fly. Did you notice some of them, they say the hand, the palm of their hand is warm and the back is cold? And some say the back is cold and the palm is warm? That should have given you massive information. That tells you the fields are coming internally out. Which means, the fields are expanding. You have to block it, that you can change that heat to the matter condition, and you get the structure. I wonder if Keshe is still wrong. Or the students have not understood. If you become expert at it, if you become good at it, and the way you create a plasma, you can stand in front of it through the interaction of literally the fields of your system with your soul dictate what you want to do with it. Because it interacts with you, becomes part of you, you can respond to it, you become you become another layer in the process. If you go higher order, which is the smaller inside, you can control the control room. If you interact with the physicality, you can find a way inside. Any other question? Now you understand why I taught you the Magraph systems. Why I explained everything and a lot of you work two years on it, because you need an energy system that you know what it does, and it works in the plasma condition. The electron system you are doing, rotating, has a limitation, it cannot go, it's just putting a crumb in a, in a big pot. Now you understand why you were taught about Magraph system, about the PPUs, about the way the system works. And if you need the AC current to trigger the plasma, you can produce it in your own system, that you always trigger your own plasma. <sighs> Mr. Kesh, there's a question, does the temperature play any role in the condition of the elements of the star formation? Yes, it gives you a lot of blood pressure. <laughs> a lot of blood pressure, if the temperature gets too high, you mean? Yeah. 
temperature is the concept, uh, is the, what they call it, position of the physicality. Mm. Ah. Have you seen any galaxies boiling with all the stars in them? Yeah, sometimes they talk about the, um, the, the particles from those galaxies being at really, really high temperatures, but yet it wouldn't affect us barely because there's so few of those in that vacuum of space in a way. So it's um, a lot of hot, but not very much of it. <laughs> do you want to hear the biggest joke man has believed himself? that the surface of the Earth, uh, Sun is so many millions of degrees and inside is so many billions. You can walk inside the Sun as much as you can walk inside the body of the Earth. Yes, the I heat think, thank you about that. Earth, I've explained in the teaching, it comes from the matter state of the condition of the surface in the interaction with this field. Mm -hmm. inside, the, inside the stars, we don't see that kind of heat. Well, they did an experiment recently with a, a basically like a plasma inside of a vacuum chamber and a sapphire experiment it's called. And that's what they discovered. The center core of the electrode was um, a few thousand degrees, but the outer part of it, the fields that were created around that electrode, went up into the tens of thousands and possibly up into much more actually. Um, in, in circles around that center electrode. So that would be like the sun, which would be cool in the center, which is hard to believe, but then hotter and hotter in these circles around it until we you know, get to the surface of the sun, which what the hottest would be at the surface, I guess, would be the, uh, the way that goes. But the closer we get to the core, the cooler... It doesn't. What about the the Earth? Is that similar at the core of the Earth to the Very much. Cash? Very much. You see, you you were the very first one you saw this rig, and you didn't understand. You remember when we had those tests, and we keep on referring to it. We saw that hollow center. Mm -hmm. Um. That hollow center. Doesn't matter what temperatures you create here, it stays hollow under the standards and that's what they call plasma temperature of none. I call it as like the Chinese system of counting, zero doesn't exist. Mm. It doesn't exist. Because there's no matter, it's a field interaction of higher order and they don't convert to lower order that creates friction and heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This this is <laughs> this is like uh, the core of your whole teaching, basically. This voidness is where uh, it's hard to conceive. This idea of the that voidness is where the most intenseness comes from, in a way, and it's it's hard to get the, the mind around. It's the absence of everything gives it more potential than anything. You see, if you remember those cancers you put in the core and you rotate it, and gradually we saw this hollow wall. This hollow wall where you see the interface of the water and then you had the, your cancers on the boundary, if you remember. You had the cancers here and the rest was water. And then you have an empty center. Yeah? Yeah, the Gans this, ring we called yeah. it, uh, around the, yeah. the outside. You have this and you have a center. This is, in fact, if you look at it, it's, um, let me choose a color. This, in fact, if you look at it, it's like this. It's so tense, it's so tightly packed, that at a point of the, not the matter level, so it can't the whole state, manifests itself here. But, if you look at it, you have Gans, individual Ganses there. So, the strength of the Gans here, which you had one Gans, is equal to this, is created this, the collection of these has created it. This is the soul of the system, this is the soul of the man. Physicality of man and sees with these Ganses, you're a sphere being, if you want. But now you dictate the sphere shape with the plastic you put around.
we got to leave in about uh, 20 odd minutes, please. I think today's teaching was collection of understanding how you got the race towards life. You got to learn something very interesting because it's coming more and more of it. People come around Keshe Foundation, learn, and then when they think they learn something, they call themselves God, and they deny their father teacher. You shall get nowhere. We had this very recently with a couple of people with governments. They realize the knowledge is comes from somewhere else. Does not matter what you claim. Try to be transparent that what you learn goes back to where it came that more people can learn from. Arrogance of a little tiny knowledge shows ignorance of the man of his own existence. When we teach, we teach everything. As I said, being energy, space, medical, material, food. And when you learn something very tiny and you think, now I can deny everything because I am wrong, it's the time when you demise yourself. And we've seen many people around the Foundation who disappeared. The same way. Let the knowledge not become a source of arrogance. Let the knowledge you gain become the source of elevation of the man in the direction of knowledge or science. Any other question? Um, <clears throat> uh, Renate has a question for Mr. Kesh. Uh, perhaps you've answered this question before. It says, I wonder, we have the oceans with salt water and we have our GANS tanks with salt water. What role do the oceans play between the Sun and Earth and possibly all other planets. Pardon? Okay, it's, um, we have the oceans with salt water and we have our GANS tanks with salt water. What role do the oceans play between the Sun and Earth and possibly all other planets? Oh, the oceans are for this planet and this is where life can move freely in the dimension of matter state of this planet. If you look at it, we explained before, how they interact, which is the hydrogen with the oxygen, which we call the water. Look at the ratio disbursement of the fields, gravitational and the magnetic, in respect to Earth gravitational magnetic field. This is where the gravitation of the gases, which is the oxygen, has to find a compromise in balance with the gravitation of the center of the Earth, gravitational field forces. The two meet. Hydrogen is like a two wings for the, uh, what I call the oxygen, to find its balance in respect to gravitational field of the center of the Earth. Earth creates gravitational magnetic through the plasma of the matter state of itself. Where the Earth condition, which is oxygen, which is on the gaseous side, is above the matter state of the Earth. When they two compromise, they have to come together, it needs a balancer, so you have two hydrogens. So, is the interaction balance between the two gravitation of the gaseous, plus the matter state, which gives you the liquidity of the planet. And it's only use, attributes of the structure of this planet. In some places you find uranium as a liquid. Because it's the same principle again, but you have to see what uranium is balancing itself with, with the gravitational magnetic field of it. Because what it actually happens is very simple. For those of you who understood from the beginning,
And in fact, if you look at it, it's very complicated, but very simple. You got a field which goes down, it goes through, it goes down, it goes through, it comes down, it goes through and it comes back. It's the loop of the balance of the two. But here, this field force is the gravitational field force of the uh, gaseous part in respect to the gravitational magnetic field inertia part of the matter side. So, you get liquidity or a balance of power of one in respect to the other. If you really find liquid, then you understand exactly what it does. If they let us teach physics in true essence of physics, all the physics books of today will become a very good fireplace. There's so much wrong has been taught that they even be questioned what we hear now is correct into what the rubbish we've been taught. In a way we question our own integrity of why do we accept this rubbish, so we prefer to that one doesn't show who we are. The people who move to plasma technology and gas technology are those who understand what they've been and what it could be and what can I use from what I learned to add to this that I understand more that I can use it. As I said, without the past wasn't, wouldn't be the future, but in that process there's a lot of rubbish that's coming. We are still waiting for Royal Astronomical Society to answer us. Anything which has got the royal on it, is nothing but fraud. Anything else? Uh, Richard asks, what color would the Richard, Gans... Yeah. Richard, you beak? Beak, from you, Holland. Yes. What color would the Gans of gold be? Try it and tell me. <laughs> Okay. It is very much like uh, copper. Depends what current you allow to flow through it. It goes from green to orange to black. Depends how fast you release the nanostructure into the environment. Achilles says, we need to give to the flight system by giving to the neutron, which is the common denominator of all universe center, magnetical field to increase its gravitational field. I don't know if that quite made sense, but he's saying to, by giving to the neutron, which is the common denominator of all the universe centers, the magnetical field to increase its gravitational field. I don't understand. Perhaps if Achilles could rephrase the question, then maybe we could uh, understand it better. In today's teaching, I've explained a lot of key, important position, condition and knowledge in respect to the space travel. And a lot of understanding is needed to be done. It's not just that we do it, we can do it, is Learn from the process of creation of life. You bring two ganses together, and in absorbing energy from the womb of the mother, they create a dynamic system that the rotation, in giving the fields to each other, creates the soul of the man. And then the soul of the man runs the physicality. So your systems have to be the same, if you want to live an independent life in the universe. There is no difference. 
I'm not teaching you anything different, but at least now you understand more about your own creation, maybe you understand what your system can create. Go back to the word of the creation. I made man in the image of myself. If your soul has managed to make you as a man, give you a dimension of physicality, you can do the same, bring elements together, that in the structure of bringing matters together, you can create a soul, that then you can create his physicality. Matter to energy, energy to matter, that's all you got to do. And I don't understand how none of you understand this simple process. You are created out of it. How come you got a problem to create from it? Well, maybe it gets into Dan's question, which is how important is the hemoglobin in the control of the flight system? How important is God in the flight system? <laughs> it's just words, it's a collection of fields. What's the hemoglobin? You got the iron attached to protein. You make it in your system. There's more of the fields, more correction of interaction of fields. Has any of you managed to reach any position that you think you'll be able to fly soon? I feel... I think we're getting close in Arizona. Pardon? I think we're getting close in Arizona. Are we, can we start selling tickets now? Uh, I'll give you the first flight. No, 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 I already flown. I don't need your first flight. You fly yourself. I help you. Okay. Be careful you put your leg in, huh? Oh, uh, we're not going to put anything in. <laughs> no, I mean, get your leg in. Don't leave a leg outside. Okay. <laughs> well, how far are you, John? Um, you know, we've made what I think are some breakthrough understandings. And, uh, um... We just have to, we're, we're, tomorrow should be an interesting day, and uh, we'll see how it goes. What's happening tomorrow? Have you invited the aliens? Uh, we're going to run into the test tomorrow, but I have high hopes for it. That's good. That's very interesting. How far are you in respect to creating a fuel which you're happy with? Um, that's exactly where we're at right now, and I think we've, I think we're, uh, that's what we're going to test out tomorrow. So, uh... Shall we have a, a special teaching tomorrow? If we are able to do what I think we're going to be able to do, we'll see. We'll wait. When you give us a green light, we call an emergency presentation. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other team working on this? Or any individuals working on this? A lot what? of you have got these machines rotating. I've got some concepts that I'm working on, but I haven't... Uh, I, I'm ready to begin the physicality experiments with it, but... Um, I have, I have no deadline yet and have to put the time in to actually do it, so it's part of the process. Anybody else? Of course. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Me, Mr. Kesh, Armand. Oh, we don't know this voice. Hi, hi, Armand how are you? I'm doing good. So if you I'm let sure. me in quiet peace, I will. What happened? Nothing. 
<laughs> now you ask. Are me you on the way to Arizona? No, I am right in here, Mexico. I have everything that I need. So you're gonna fly? Yeah, if I stay here. No problem. Don't forget your straw hat. No problem, huh? And don't leave your zebra donkey behind. <laughs> I'll show next week. And no turtle soup. Pardon? <laughs> no turtle soup. No turtle soup. <laughs> well, we don't know what turtle has got to do with it. Actually, the shut off it makes it a very good fly system. If you can hang the right, uh, what do you call it, magrav system in the same position. It could be the empty core in the middle, the no turtle soup core. Yep, but they still have a turtle in it. Mm -hmm. No, Mr. Kesha, I'm trying to set it up right in here. I think I will finish it next week. Hopefully, we see a flight system next week. Yes, I hope to. Any, anybody else? If you're making a system, show it. Don't be afraid that you could be wrong or whatever, we all learn from each other. Uh, we did have a question from Amaran in the Q&A, says, um, I've seen many assumptions about how to get GANs of H3, but no clear reproducible working procedure. Can you please present the correct procedure, and how can I check the quality of the H3 GANs? The um, number of people have made their own assumptions and their own procedures, and uh, um, like in Arizona, they, they have come up with a new uh, way of doing it and uh, understanding of it. To do it their way and um, um, I think something which we refer back to and has got to be understood is that um, any You, you have to understand how to use the systems. Any structure can be used. You can use uh, a flying carpet. You have to understand how. Once you understand the principle, doesn't matter what they give you. I explain this to some children, it's like a magician, you know, they can give you a ping pong ball, you can still throw four of them up, they can give you a tennis ball, you can still four of them up. I can give you a brass ball, you still can send them the same, same thing, you can have four balloons, you can have. Once you learn the technique, it does not matter what you have. And this has, has got to be understood. The problem is uh, understanding the totality. Any other question? from Maria, who says, uh, what would be, what could the cabin for the Earth be made of? 
what about the universe made of wood aluminum plates or what which material could be the best what you mean I guess she means uh, if you're building a spaceship for the earth what would the cabin be made out of wood aluminum plates or what material could be the best and then what about in the universe uh, universe you usually so. get a structure of the diamond and depends on what field of strength you use you create floors and you create partitions if that is your point of uh, uh, reference to have something How you position this morning? We were talking with um, our Chinese team in respect to uh, how to move and position systems. Can we we can move something to make a wall, and we can make a move something and to make a floor. You got to remember one establish your dam. The dimensions or uh, characteristics of your field. Yeah, this is something a lot of you have a problem with, and I would like to put your mind at this. Is once you establish this field flow, one kilogram, ten kilogram. One million kilogram, one trillion kilogram has no, make no difference with the Earth gravitational magnetic field. Because now your system itself is dictator of the weight it carries. The fields which you have produced are important, not the mass which is in it. The mass is so low compared to the fields you created. Thousand ton is nothing. And people say, <gasps> machine can't carry a thousand ton? Yes, because now I'm in a balloon, inside I can carry whatever like. As I said many times, when you have an envelope, I can give you a million dollar in an envelope, notes, or I can write a check for one million, it's all the same. I can put ten checks of one thousand or ten thousand and one check of one minute. it doesn't make a difference the envelope is the envelope it carries everything else now the envelope is created so a lot of you who have fear of mass with your system it means you haven't understood you remember we released a picture which we saw in south of Italy three days after we gave some teaching two or three years ago, and the holding center of it. This is the center here. I hope I've given you enough clue. This light in the center is this light here is so strong, that these three we do not see. Do you have that picture? Um, I'm not sure which one you mean, Mr. Keshe. Could you explain that? We I took this picture, it was above uh, south of Italy for hours. The weekend before it, maybe it's time. Oh, these, the, with the sun thing. Um, yeah. And the Italian Air Force was trying to capture it somehow. Um, I'm going to send it to you on your um, on your safe line, which I send everything to you. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, I have a bandwidth to transmit it. There we are. It's coming to you. You show it, and then you understand it. It's coming up. This is what I took a few days before, in the teaching we spoke about it. And, uh, 
That weekend in south of Italy, we recorded it. It was a lot of people. Whoever was there, they could see it. The Italian Air Force went crazy, high-level flights, they were trying to assess it, but it was exactly what we explained. The light you see in the center shadow is, is, is this combination of the fields. Have you received it? Uh, no, it seems to be a pretty big file, so I think it's... Uh, uh, starting to come through here. Uh, should I send That's you right. another one? This is the... This is the actual operational, um, fully operational UFO. Okay, so just a second here. Wait. There's a second one. Okay, get that lined up here. Remember that we have to stop at two hours. Now it's half an hour later. Can yeah. you put a voice on? Okay, sure. Just let me read. Yeah, it's there. nothing. It's just my voice, nothing else. Okay. You make sure that the share is correct. I'll send you a second one. Okay. Stop. Now it's half an hour later. And you see it is still in a full formation. This is the uh, same thing. Have you see? Still the cloud have changed, but the position of the UFO in making cloud condition has not changed. This is what we were teaching, and now friends show it to you. Have you got the camera? If you listen, I say, friends, show it to you. There's a second one, if you want to play it. This is done later on again. Have we got the second one? Yeah, I'm just trying to get that uh, lined up here. something wrong it's uh it keeps coming through as it looks to be the same as the first video yeah here, it's so. the same video but it's, it's the same position times later half an hour now later holding that position with all the clouds and everything changing it's, it's the space, this is the center line where you see the central free plasma condition. Have you received the download? Uh, it keeps coming through as the same video as the first one. Yeah, yeah, but it's different. Well, it's the same time. I can try to play it and we can see. Okay, how I sent you... Uh, let me see, let me try it here. It's that one. Now it's half an hour later, and no, you it's see this still... Us. In a full formation. We have about four of these videos. Pardon me, is that it, Mr. Cash? We have, yeah, it's the same one. We got about four of these, four videos of this, which is uh, taken. We had the other people who took it to send it to us too. Well, we definitely get the idea here. And uh, I know you're short of time, you should probably get going there, so... Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a second. There's another one coming another through. Just coming in. I think it's 
this anyway. In any case, thank you very much for today. I think today's teaching, as I said, is very, if for those who understood, can bring a lot of changes very rapid. And those who try to understand, do not underestimate your knowledge. What's it? Is that the new one? Uh, yeah, again, it is playing as exactly the same as the other one, That's apparently. Same. I don't know why it shows as a, a different video, but every time I try to download it, it Check comes it through as the same. Oh, it's okay. No problem. We can always show the rest of it next time. Okay. Thank you very much for today. Thank you, we Mr. Kesh. Lots of, of lots of great information today. Thank you so much. Uh, Rick, are we going to have the reading in Hungarian today? Should we do that, uh, Mr. Kesh? Yes, please. And at the same time, don't forget regarding the coins that are still in the process. And don't forget about donation to the foundation. Yes, we'll play uh, some videos at the end uh, for Thank that. You very much indeed. Thank you indeed. Thank you for today. Now, who's to do the um, reading of the Hungarian? Shandor? Sh Shandor Bokashi from Hungary. Thank you, Shandor. Are you ready to go with that, or what can we share? Yes. Can we share the document, or is it uh, visible? Just a second. I've got uh, a bunch of other things. Is it visible here, Sandor? Uh, Good. Okay. There we go. Let me see for little order to have enough voice for you. Okay. Thank you, Shander. Anytime you're ready, just uh, take it away there. Okay, so let me read in Hungarian language uh, the Blue Planet Earth uh, Constitution. Mi a Föld nevű kék bolygóhoz kapcsolódó összesény lelkei ezennel megalkottuk azt, ami a Föld kék bolygó alkotmánya. Egy nemzet, egy bolygó, egy faj. Alkotmány. A földtanács azért jött létre, biztosítsa, hogy minden földi lény egyenlő jogokkal bír, nem lesz több konfliktus vagy háború ezen a bolygón és azon túl. A háborúk végét és a béke megteremtését az összes teremtmény egyetértésével érik el. A világ béke felé vezető úton meg kell érteni és értetni, hogy az egyedüli megoldás, az ellenfél lelkével való párbeszéd és az ellenfél lelke felemelése által érhető el, nem pedig az ellenfél lelki vagy fizikai megsemmisítése által. A világ béke kell legyen minden földön levő lény létének mozgatórugója. A földtanács lesz az ászlóvivője ennek a mozgalomnak, hogy olyan környezetet teremtsen, hogy a béke megvalósítható legyen, azok között, kik a föld lakói, akik itt szeretnének továbbra is élni, de azok számára is, akik itt vannak, és az űrben szeretnének élni. A földnek a béke bölcsőjévé kell válnia, lehetővé téve minden földi faj fejlődését. Mi a földtanács elismerjük, hogy a föld része a naprendszernek, a galaxisnak, a világegyetemnek és az egyetemes teremtetnek, avagy unikosznak. Mint ilyennek, a Földnek a teremtés ciklusa részévé kell válnia, támogatva a Földet és benne minden teremtményt, hogy a jelenlegi fejlődési szakaszt elhagyva egy kielégítőbb és békésebb létezéshez jusson. Tiszteletbe tartjuk a Földanyát, mint egy élő lényt, amelynek saját lelke van. Kezdve az atomokkal, növényekig, állatokkal, emberekig, rovarokig, mikrobáig, és még ezután felfedezendőek, mint lelkek, amelyek osztoznak a teremtő lényegében, és szint úgy a földbolygó erőtereiben. Együtt összeadódva alkotjuk a bolygó együttes lelkét. Tudomásul vesszük, hogy a bolygó minden élőlényét fenntartani, táplálni, támogatni és táplálni kell, velük békében élni, beleértve az állatokat, a növényeket, az ökoszisztémákat, és más láthatatlan lényeket, valamint magát a földanyát is. 
Mindegyik elősegíti a növekedést és a fejlődést. Az életet erősíti. Nem csak itt a Földön, hanem az egész teljességben is, mivel elismerjük, hogy részesei vagyunk az egésznek. A kölcsönös együttműködés, a javak igazságos elosztása, a jólét, mindenki számára való elérése a Földtanács legfontosabb feladata. Célunk, hogy támogassuk a bolygót, mint egészet és minden itt élő lényt. Mi azért szolgálunk, hogy olyan környezetet teremtsünk, mely gondoskodva harmóniát teremt, amelyben minden élőlény sajátosságai szerint növekedhet és fejlődhet. A Földtanács hat tagja. Bolygónk földrészeit egy-egy tag képviseli. Ezek a földrészek Afrika, Ausztrália, Ázsia, Dél-Amerika, Észak-Amerika és Európa. Minden egyes tag képviseli a saját földrészén élő népek igényeit és kívánságait, valamint az ott tartózkodó élőlények összességét. Kiválasztási folyamatok. A tagoknak előzőleg két, legalább két földrészen kellett élniük, és legalább két nyelven kell beszélniük. Ez lehetővé teszi a szélesebb távlatok megértését, amikor számba veszik az emberiség igényeit. A lelkek tisztasága. A Földtanács hat tagja azért van, hogy lelkük megértéséből a fizikai, testi megnyilvánulás által szolgáljon. A Föld tanácsának megbizatása támogatni és szolgálni, biztosítani és védeni. Lelkeinket eljuttatni annak megértésére, hogy megvan az erő bennünk, hogy irányítsuk magunkat és a többi lélekkel való kölcsönhatásban békés együttélést hozzunk létre. Szándékunk, hogy minden élő lélek legjobb tulajdonságát hozzuk ki ezen a bolygón, melyet Földnek hívunk. Megadni lelkünk fizikai megnyilvánulásának szabadságát, hogy békében, szeretetben és bizalomban éljünk ezen a bolygón és az űrben. Kívánjuk, hogy a teremtésben minden élő lény békében, harmóniában és nyugalomban éljen. Eljött az idő, hogy az erőforrásokhoz való hozzáférést igazságos és tisztességes módon minden lénynek lehetővé tegyük. A Földtanás szolgál és támogat, hogy minden lénynek a következőket biztosítsa. 1. Társulási szabadság. 2 a vélemény nyilvánítás szabadság, három, a szabad mozgás, négy, az éhezés alól való mentesség szabadsága, öt, a forrásokhoz való szabad hozzáférés, hat, saját lelkünk kutatása és megértésének a szabadsága, hét, a tanulás szabadsága, nyolc, szabadon hozzájárulni tehetségeink, tudásunk függvényében a társadalom felemelkedéséhez, kilenc, Szabadon eldönteni, hogyan és mikor szeretnénk megnyilvánulni fizikai vagy lelki állapotban. 10. Szabadság, hogy más birtoka ne lehessünk. 11. Szabadság az új és innovatív technológiák és információk békés alkalmazására, és mentesség ezek visszaszorítását. 12. A megosztás szabadsága. 13. A gondolkodás szabadsága. 14. A szeretet és ajándékozás szabadsága. 15. A választás szabadsága. 16. A nyelv szabadsága. 17. Szabadulás a pénzügyi rendszerből. 18. Mentesség büntetéstől. Nincs fogság vagy végrehajtás. 19. Mentesség konfliktusoktól és háborúktól. 20. Szabadulás a másoktól való félelemtől mindazoktól, akik tagadják ezeket a szabadságjogokat. Ne legyenek nemzeteket elválasztó vagy regionális határok. Semki sem különböztethető meg a bőrszín, faj, hitbéli kulturális hovatartozás miatt. Ne legyenek monetáris korlátok, melyek egyeseket megoszt és másoknak tisztességtelen előnyöket nyújtanak mások fölött. Ne legyenek, ne legyenek örökölhető címek vezető szereplőklések, trónutódlás, 
királyság, sem családi egyeduralom, semmilyen cím alatt. Ne legyen félelem a büntetéstől egyetlen bűncselekmény miatt sem. A bűncselekmény elkövetők lelkének felemelése lehetővé fogja tenni a szabadságvesztés és halálbüntetés minden formájának eltörlését. Az oktatás és tudás és a tudás a lélek szintjén történő megosztása révén minden lény felemelkedik. Nincs helye büntetésnek a lélek szintjén, melyen a lélek megérti saját térerősségét. Nincs szükség olyan pénzügyi rendszerre, amely árut és szolgáltatásokat cserél munkáért. Olyan körülményeket teremtünk, ahol a pénznek nincs hely a társadalomban. Amikor minden lény, minden fizikai szükséglete teljesül, akkor olyan munkát fogunk végezni, amelyel örömet szerzünk másoknak és magunknak is. A pénzügyi rendszer vége az egészséges ember lények, lények elnézést, az, emberi, az egészséges emberi lények korszakát, és az igaz szeretetet fogja előd idézni az egész kék bolygón. A munka legyen a munka örömének céljából, vagy a többiek szolgálatának öröméért, és mások lelkének felemeléséért, ahogy a magunkért is. Mindazok, akik döntéshozóként és útmutatóként kívánnak szolgálni, felajánlhatják, hogy szolgálják lelkük megértését és mások beleegyezését, hogy teljesíthessék a szükséges oktató útmutató szerepet. A megértés lehetővé teszi, hogy elismerjék a lélek egyedülálló erősségeit, hogy szolgáljanak mások javára és felemeljék az egész emberiséget. Ezek az emberek segítenek felvilágosítani és ihletni a felemelkedés lehetőségét másokban. Vezetővé egy emberi lélek belülről saját lelkének kisugárzásából és mások hozzájárulása által válik. Tiszteletbe tartjuk a Föld és azon túlmenően az összes lény megnyilvánulási formáját. A bolygón minden lénynek egyenlő szabadsággal kell rendelkeznie. Szabadság békében élni másokkal, kölcsönös méltósággal és tisztelettel, egymás megbecsülésével. Adott a választási lehetőség arra, hogy kiki oly módon éljen, ahogyan kívánja, de másokra való odafigyeléssel és tisztelettel. A bolygó minden élődényét támogatni kell, hogy szükséget senki ne szenvedjen semmiben. Menedékhez, vízhez, élelmiszerhez, biztonsághoz, anyaghoz és energiaszabadsághoz, földi vagy univerzális erőforrásokból való alapvető hozzáférésnek elsőbséget kell élveznie, valamint békét és stabilitást kell biztosítani az érzelmi jólét és a megvilágosodás elérése érdekében. A sokféleséget a teremtő egyedülálló és változatos megnyilvánulásaként ismerik el, felkarolva és ünnepelve azokat, hogy gazdagabbá teszik életünket. Minden lényt támogatni és ösztönözni kell a tudás megszerzésére. Különösen az emberiségnek kell szabadon feltárni és megérteni ezt a tudást, mely nélkül nem lehet fennmaradni. Az önálló, önfenntartó eszközök létrehozása elsőrendű feladat. A lények lelke diktál és irányít egy felelősségteljes, igazságos, helyes, tisztességes életmódot. Minden teremtmény javára, egyenlő intézkedések. Az, ember, az emberiség történelmében először, már gyerekkortól kezdődően lehetőség van az emberi lélek megismerésére. Természeti katasztrófák idején az adott területen élő lényeknek kell egy lényként segítségére sietni, senkit sem előnybe részesíteni, egyenlő bánásmód mindenkinek. Ez magába foglalja a bolygó ökoszisztémájának megértését, és azt, hogy minden egyes élő lénynek nélkülözhetetlen szerepe van az életciklusban. Minden lény hozzáférést és erőforrásokat osz meg, a bőség, és, a bőség is és a katasztrófa idején is. Amikor valahol konfliktus merül fel, mindenféllel békét hozó tárgyalást kell folytatni. Az emberiségnek tartós békére van szüksége. Ez csak akkor érhető el, ha figyelembe veszük mindkét fél igényét. Minden lény védelmet élvez testi és lelki épséget illetően az ártó szándék ellen. Töntéshozatali folyamat A többség nem sértheti a kisebbségek szabadságát. 
az egyetértés, a párbeszéd és a lélek felemelkedése által valósul meg. Minden döntés mindenki számára előnyösnek kell lennie. Minden lény tiszteletben kell tartani, tisztességesnek és minden szempontból egyenlőnek kell tekinteni. A lények lelkei minden intézkedést békés úton irányítanak. A cél a béke megteremtése a bolygón, minden a bolygón élő számára. Minden lény igényének kiszolgálása az egyetlen módja ennek elérésének. Meghívó. Minden lény a legkisebbtől a legnagyobbig, a legnagyobb teremtésig. Jöjj, ünnepelj velünk, ízleljük meg és öleljük meg a békét, a szeretetet, a bizalmat és a szabadságot. Minden lény azért van itt, hogy elősegítse az emberi tudatosság legmagasabb szintre való emelését, a lelkek felemelkedését. Minden lélek leteszi a támadó fegyvereket, a gyűlöletet és a nézet különbségeket. Legyen béke és nyugalom ezen a kék bolygón, amit Földnek hívunk. Minden élőlény harmóniába fog élni a kék bolygón minden teremtménnyel, amit Földnek és az egész világegyetemnek hívunk. A jelenlegi fizikai törvényszerűségek addig élnek, míg az ember megérti saját lelkét és létének valóságát az egyetemesség határain belül. A lélek megérdemli, hogy mindent megtudjon a teremtés különböző szintjeiről. Minden élőlénynek egyenlő joga, hogy háborítatlanul békében éljen a Földön és a világ mindenségben. Minden élőlény a legjobb tudását, képességét és szépségét adja a teremtés felvirágoztatására. Fogd vissza a feletti hatalomvágyadat, hogy másokon uralkodj. A hatalom sehova sem vezet. Senki sem felsőbbrendű másoknál. Sem vezető, sem nép. Nem vonhat mást, vagy másokat hatalma, ellenőrzése és uralma alá, csak arra való, hogy békét, szeretetet, boldogságot és szabadságot adjon másoknak. E földi alkotmány szándéka béke, szeretet, bizalom megvalósítása, az összes élőlény szabadságára, beleértve a teremtés más teremtményeit is. Ez az alkotmány feljogosít mindenkit, hogy helyesen cselekedjen, örömmel dolgozzon és szolgáljon a többi teremtménnyel együtt, és meglássa a szépséget a teremtésben. Ez az alkotmány folytonos, bármikor módosítható, bővíthető, ahogy a szükség kívánja az ember békés egymás mellett való élésére, ember és ember közötti békeszerződésekre ne legyenek háborúk és vagy semmilyen agresszió sem ezen a kék bolygón, amit mi földnek nevezünk, és kapcsolatba léphet az univerzum a különböző területeréről származó más lényekkel. Kék bolygó alkotmányát minden év januárjában frissítik. Függelék. Ezt az oldalt szándékosan, üresen hagytuk. Jövőben szükséges módosításokhoz, amire szükség lehet a béke fenntartásához a kék bolygón is azon túl. Alkották a Föld nevű kék bolygó népeinek lelkei, kiket a Föld tanás tagjai képviselnek. Alex Egbaran, Merankes, Wayne Guyen, Parviz Rashwand, Lisa McDonald, Rodrigo Vildosola. Elektronikus posta kapcsolat. Lérhetőség. Peace, Kukac, The Earth Council, Pontorg. Ez volt a Földnevű Kékbolygó alkotmánya. This was the uh, Blue Planet Earth Constitution in Hungarian language. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much, Shandor. That was a beautiful reading. Nice to hear that language. Okay. That's, okay thank you. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today's 222nd Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, May 8th, 2000, sorry, May 3rd, 2018. And uh, thank you everybody for attending. We will have a couple of videos to uh, go out with here and I encourage people to um, those that can afford it to donate to the Keshe Foundation um, it's a good time now for donations Mr. Keshe has requested that and he ha has seldom asked for donations I note in the past 222nd uh, 222 workshops 
he's uh, very very seldom asked for any donations so we know it's important and we should respect that but uh, please if you can't afford it don't worry about giving a donation some people seem to be concerned about giving a donation when they can't afford it and so on don't that's not the uh, donate your time to yeah each other. that's that's that not the, the best way to do it if you can financially afford it. Sure. Your time and teach. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think Flint, you're ready to go with uh, the following videos. Okay, thank you everybody yeah. and see you next week. I just want to wish my son a happy eighth birthday for me. Oh, well, that's very interesting. And today is the 222nd workshop and Two times two times two is eight. There we go. Perfect. Hello. We are the Keshe Foundation. Our mission is to bring peace on Earth and join humanity with the universal community. We wish and work to bring man as equal to all beings in the universe. By teaching plasma science and technology equally to everyone, no one is left out and no one is abused due to lack of knowledge. By donating to us, you can help achieve this goal. keshfoundation.org forward slash donate The process of understanding is very simple. The process is, as I explained last time, I explained more in detail. We come, we are created out of the rays within the center of the universe. In interaction and reduction in the strength and division by the strength in certain strength fields, in collection of the totality of the expansion of the universe, some energies, some dynamic fields have come together. Over billions of years, these fields lead to the creation of what we call the sun. where the plasma gathers together. The same process repeats again because the Sun is the same as the energy center of the universe. Now, the heavier, the larger amount of the energy which is collected in this span of the universe the sun that the radius out was the same thing again. Radius is fields out and in interaction with the itself, with the fields of itself leads to creation of planet. In that process of the creation of planet, the same process happens again. In the interaction of the fields of the Earth with its environment and cooling and exchange with the strength of the other things in the environment of the space of the solar system leads to creation of a cell matter state. And that itself, in coming together and slowing down in certain ways, as we call, leads to another sun. We call the soul of the man. 
this is the truth about the life and creation of the man. But if the soul of the man can understand and absorb and be correct with his conduct, he can become the strength of the fields and carry the strength of the field of the planet which came to his creation. And if the soul can understand with the same process, can interact, can be correct, can absorb with itself the totality of the strength of what it needs, it shall become the sun. And then the same soul has the energy that it can absorb within the solar system, within the galaxy, shall become the center of the universe. Earth, we call it the rain, come from, goes back to solar system, we call it planetary system. We come from the rays, we become the planet and we go back to the mother. The same thing happens with the galaxies, with the solar systems which they get absorbed back in and they chew up back in. The life the process of existence in the universe is the same. It doesn't matter on what exchange and what extent. So, what is the man fighting for? Why do we fight for something which has come from the point of the creation and in the process it goes back to The soul of the man, as the energy of the earth, gives the face of the man, the face of the earth, and that process is the same for the soul of the man. Our soul, in reduction in strength, in interaction with the emotion of the field of the environment, leads to manifestation of the existence of the man. But once it's completed, does it need the face? Or can it be and becomes free from it, what we call the soul of the man, be free and detached from its existence? Our soul is part of the process of the creation. The key to one question, for man shall be in the future to be answered, as we saw the sun became the earth, and as we saw, the earth became man's soul. What would be the destiny of the soul of the man now becomes free at the point of departure from its account. Would it become the sun for creation of another life, or many lives, or correction of lives? This shall be, and this is how it happens. When you create a soul, which is not correct, which is misconduct by itself, cannot give, you lead to the creation of this next cycle of creation, which has started the wrong way, the wrong strength. This is one thing the man has never understood. You become the creator of another universe, another cycle. The 
and this is what you have to judge within the structure of the soul of the man. What would I like that cycle to be? In the physical life, we create children. In the dimension of the life, of the soul of the man, what that man, what that soul would create. If man has thought up to now, that's it. My end, my point, when I die is finished. There's as much fallacy that when the sun is destroyed in any shape or form, there shall be nothing left. But we know the part of the sun becomes part of the galaxy and becomes part of new life. So shall be the soul of the man. The judgment of the man has to be according to what he sees the future his soul can conduct to be. The day of judgment is for the man, not in front of the Creator. That what my soul judges to be and what shall create. Man never understood and shall never understand, till can solve this dilemma within itself. The reality is very, very, very real. And that is, as we seen, the energy of the galaxy become the sun, the energy of the sun has become the earth, and the energy of the earth has become the soul of the man. So shall be the soul of the man, which is the energy itself, another cycle of life. How can you change when you don't understand? How can you change the process of understanding if you do not understand the process of the creation? Do we need to extend the understanding of the man that what is the future he brings? We care about our children what education they get, what they wear, how happy they will be, where they sleep. Now the man has to be careful and consider what life shall my soul create. Because those are the children of your soul. As we see, the rays of the sun has become a planet, and seven million children of it. Seven billion unlimited, which is growing. So the soul of the man will go through the same process. How many billions and subdivisions and sub matter state of the physicality of the man your soul shall create? Would it be the soul of wars and conflict and the forever killing, or would it be the soul of the let's say a solar system which is peaceful. This is the truth and the reality of God, the soul of the man. First of all, as I said many times recently, we never understood that the soul of the man is within the structure of the man. And now that we understood, we understand on departure from the physicality of the man, the same process will carry on as it did for a star and planet and the soul of the man becomes another energy source, a higher order, which itself leads to the creation, it becomes the star, it becomes the center of the new cycle of creation. This is what the human race has to understand. The cycle actually starts at the point of death, and not finishes at the point of death. In so many ways, if one understands, is as the dusts, specks of dust came together to make the Earth in the solar system, so has the specks of the atoms has come to be the creator of man. And the essence of the creation of the specks of dust on the solar system has led to the creation of man. So shall be the fields from the soul of the man which lead to creation of another side of life. What kind of life man would like to have to be created by the soul? 
this is the day of judgment. This is what man never understood. Now, you have to understand. You have no choice. Up to today, you were not aware of it. From today, you are aware of it. You are responsible for it. Your conduct has to be to elevate your soul, that in elevating the soul, what you become the creator of, stands correct in the conduct of the citizens. We don't give a fairy tale, this is the truth of God. As you've seen, the process does not stop with one son. The cycle carries on. It's very interesting in how humanity now knows in the fact to handle the fact. It'll take decades for man to understand, and then you understand those who become the tools of war, the tools of conflict, they have less, they have nothing to start with, they have to become the dust in the solar system of the others, till the day they learn more as they cannot create a new cycle through their own soul. This is the elevation of the soul of the man. To be part of the creation of a beautiful life for the next cycle. When you don't have it, you have to become another cell in the body of the structure of the bigger, for you to be just there that you can done when you could have been the soul of the man. They say, do not create fear. I give you the point of love for creation. If you cared about your children on this planet to have the best, your true children come out of your own soul in the coming time. How would you like to educate them? How would you like to be when you are in conflict with yourself and the cause of so much may happen? This is the truth and the man will take a long time to understand, as now that we understand the soul of the man is an operator for the creation of the future extent of the life of the man. Whatever is gathered by the soul, at the end, becomes its point of reference of its own creation of its own dimension. But the strangest thing is, what he creates from the soul shall become the creator of the other souls. This is the beauty about the creation, and one understands it, understands no limitation.